Are you really going to eat that podcast episode 135? Hey there, I'm your host Wendy Hill and I'm a naturopathic nutritional therapist and expert in female hormone health. I specialize in helping women gain confidence and understand their bodies, allowing them to shine. I'm a huge foodie and this podcast allows me to bring you an eclectic mixture of guests where food and health is our uniting passion. So Jackie, welcome to the podcast. I'm delighted to have you here today. Thank you very much, Wendy. I'm delighted to be here too. Oh, that's great. So for my listeners, could you just uh, introduce yourself and uh, explain to them what it is that you're doing at the moment? I know you've had a bit of a journey, we'll talk about that, but just explain to them what, what you're doing right now. Yeah, so at the moment, I have put myself in the position of menopause mentor. And what that means is helping women to sift through all the information, the information overload, if you will, that's out there. Um, For those women who have noticed changes going on, uh, who know they're perimenopausal or menopausal, and really don't know where to start. So I'm here as a guiding hand to take those early steps and then go on with further steps to an outcome where they feel more like themselves again. I think this is great. And this is why we connected, isn't it? Because, you know, I was like, well, explain what you do. And this is brilliant because it's, it's okay for me, you know, I'm a nutritionist. So, and I probably have exposure to lots of different kinds of therapists and get different practitioners, but most women don't do they and so they suddenly kind of hit with this whole kind of perimenopause or this whole kind of a plethora of symptoms that they've got and that they're like who, who do I go and see I don't I don't know and traditionally we might we might go and see our GP that would be our first and our only point of call but actually there's so many more people out there that, that can help in different ways aren't there they really are. And I think the first shock is actually reaching a point where you understand you're in perimenopause. And that's quite an admission because, as we know, hormones start jumping about quite early in life and they become noticeable symptoms when you're on average around about mid 40s. It can happen before it can happen afterwards. But when we get to that point, you suddenly think, oh, my God, I, um, uh, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Who do I speak to first? Because I've got this symptom, that symptom. I've got five symptoms. I don't know where to go for the, in the first instance. And you're right, Wendy, if we go to our doctor, bless them, it's not their fault. They do not get the training that's mm-hmm. needed. We know that. Uh, I think they get about half an hour at the moment. Um, there, there are campaigns being launched at the moment to increase that and I think a lot of GPs would really love to be able to know more but to be honest I think a lot of them are quite fearful about um, diagnosing and uh, prescribing for menopause because they really don't know enough so even now and even lady doctors are saying you know suck it up get on with it it's just menopause But of course, for some women, life can be uh, in the menopause debilitating and that's just not good enough. It's not, is it? And I think for me, I'm finding that I think with with a lot of the, the, you know, there's a lot of media out there and it's really great. And we're raising awareness, podcasts like this, raising awareness about perimenopause and, and symptoms. But actually, there's not a lot in the doctor's toolkit, really. You know, he's going to either reach for HRT. Occasionally, it's, you know, antidepressants. But even if HRT is the answer, it's not the answer on its own, is it? You know, you can, you you know, your doctor can prescribe that HRT for you. Thank you. But then just taking HRT isn't necessarily going to help with all of the symptoms that we're going to be experiencing with perimenopause. It has to be multifaceted, doesn't it? It does. It's not one size fits all. HRT is a, is a great initial step, if you will. But um, we have to be conscious of our lifestyle. And we can't take HRT and then expect to eat poorly and drink heavily and do no exercise and, you know, increase our weight and think that everything's going to be OK. And then when something goes wrong, blame it on HRT for not working. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and what, as I said, one size doesn't fit all. Every woman is so unique and every woman's past leading up to today is so unique. Every woman's mind, her energetic experiences, her physical experiences, you know, what relationship she's in, how much responsibility has she got? 
has she got a high powered job has she got growing teenagers who are also hormonal has she got aging parents who are demanding a lot of attention and very often we can be in menopause and have these life um, issues and blame it on the menopause or blame it on life but it's very often a mixture of the two anyway those things happen to come along when our estrogen is likely to be decreasing and unfortunately estrogen being our happy hormone and everything else hormone uh, it's just at the time when we need it so it really highlights and spotlights to us how much self-care is needed our self-care needs go through the roof but more often than not we don't understand or realize that but we can always do something about it Lots. yeah yeah and I think that's the key is we can do something and I talk to clients a lot about this and saying you know well it's all well and good saying like you said that estrogen is the issue but if you don't have the raw ingredients to make estrogen if you are too cortisol dominant so you you know you're making more cortisol than estrogen of course all these these things factor it so we've it's very easy isn't it to blame it oh it's the menopause it, and you're like well actually is it you know is there some other things going on other things that we can work on which are going to make the symptoms a whole load better you might be experienced 20 symptoms we might be able to get it down to three if we do some of the you know the base work and the background work so I think this is important that we it's not menopause isn't a, isn't a stick to beat ourselves with there is there are things that we can do aren't there there are so many things and again it you know the different things apply to different women so if for instance I said to a client I really think you need to look at your nutrition I'm not a nutritionist I would say you need to speak to Wendy because this is something that's really going to help you. And I think if we can get one symptom cleared or at least manageable, it just makes the whole of life so much better and so much easier. You know, um, sleep deprivation is one of the biggest uh, problems through perimenopause and menopause. And there are so many reasons for that. And we can talk through, you know, how your sleep hygiene is, how your sleep habits are, you know, what you're thinking about when you go to sleep, what you're thinking about when you wake up, are you breathing properly? There's so, so many things. I get quite excited, really, because there is so much we can look at um, and so much to discuss. You know, and one lady I'm working with at the moment, she's got a whole rake of, of issues, bless her heart. And we started off six weeks ago um, and she just didn't want to talk about anything. But now we're sort of piecing, um, isolating things and, you know, really having a look at, at what's going on with each of those uh, things, it's really helping her. So she's able to open up and articulate more about what's happening, because that's another thing, isn't it, Wendy? You know, people can't always articulate what's going on. Uh, they can't yeah. tell you because they can't explain it themselves. And that was my own experience, let alone to your partner or your kids or your parents, you know, what's happening or your workmates yeah. who yeah. kind of left you you know don't talk to her she's hormonal (laughs) and there you are sort of left perspiring in the corner and just just wanting to crawl under the desk because people don't understand the communication side of things is very important too yeah exactly I think this is the thing is if you don't we don't know you know certainly I I think I was quite early sort of in my 40s when I first started experiencing symptoms but I didn't realize I was that it was perimenopause I just thought I wasn't sleeping I was super stressed you know I was quite upset a lot of the time and I just I didn't I you know I didn't know what was happening so talking like this is really helpful because it is a journey isn't it yeah very much so and it, it's a discovery journey for both sides so yeah. every person that I've worked with I'm learning from because something always comes up and I think god I've not heard of that before you know? <laughs> And it's because it's unique to them. And they might describe something that I hadn't heard of, but in fact, somebody else has said, oh, that, that is actually the same thing, or it might be something I've experienced. And, and I really do genuinely love that people will honour me with their, their confidence. And um, like I said, I just feel a calling to this and I just want to do it more and more, really. So I really hope that people do contact me because... I know I can help them yeah. because I've done it for me and I was a bad case. <laughs> I really was. <laughs> um, I was very, very bad to myself. So, um, yeah, I think in the learning, uh, 
the learning in the worst way possible for me has been the biggest gift that I have to give. And I'll do it till my toes curl up as long as people want want my help. I'm here. <laughs> and they do. They do want your help and they do need it. So, Jackie, we're going to put all of your links in the show notes. But just to um, tell people who are listening and maybe don't have a pen, where is the best place that they can contact you? Are you social media or email? Where's the best place? Yeah, so I, I'm on Facebook. Okay. I'm- in as well and I do have a website called jackiewood.co.uk which is a work in progress I have to say um on Facebook I've got a personal profile page which is Jackie Wood I've also got a Tropic page because I'm an ambassador for Tropic Skincare and uh, I'm on LinkedIn as Menopause Mentor so easily easily accessible hopefully. easily accessible I'm sure they can find you all on those and thank you so much I think you know I really do think people should reach out and like you said even if it's just to have that initial chat with you um and it's for me it, I think often it's about knowing that there's someone who will can listen someone that can understand that isn't you know you're not about suddenly solving everything you've not got you, you've not yes, you're going to invest on a program, but you've not got a vested interest. You're not something to sell them. You're not, you know, it's not one thing, you know, come to me and I'm going to sell you the ketogenic diet or come to me and I'm going to give you HRT. That is not what you're saying. You're saying, come to me and I'm going to give you what you need. And that I think is the key. Exactly. It is what they need. And I don't even know what that is until we start work together. So <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's we. Part. Brilliant, brilliant. So I am just going to do my quick fire round with you now, if that's okay. So the last bit. So um, are you a coffee or a herbal tea lady? Oh, coffee. Coffee. Oh, um, <laughs> trainers or heels? Heels. Oh, I thought you'd say that. I definitely <laughs> did. And are you a yoga or a hit class? Or oh, yoga. And my last one is owl or lark? Lark. Oh, bless you. I thought you would be. And of course, my final question, which I ask everybody on the podcast is, what have you got for tea tonight, Jackie? Well, I think it's going to be something with fish and it could involve Jackie potato and some salad. So nice. What fish What fish have you got? Do you know? Um, we've yet to buy it. So uh, what do you recommend? Well, oily fish, always oily fish. So salmon or we have lovely sardines and mackerel in the UK. So if you can get some fresh sardines, that would be nice. Mm, I've actually got some mackerel in the freezer. So pop that out. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Teamwork. Teamwork makes a dream work. (laughs) Thank you so much. You've been an amazing guest today. And I really think the listeners will have really resonated with you. We'll put all of your links in the show notes. But thank you so much. It's been lovely to chat to you. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks for asking questions. I've enjoyed answering and um, for opening up this space for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been brilliant. Thank you for listening to the Are You Really Going to Eat That podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, why not share it with your family and friends? And the best way to help me get out to a wider audience would be to leave me a review. So if you just got a couple of minutes, if you popped into iTunes and just scroll down to the bottom, click five stars, of course, and leave me a review. That really helps our ratings. And to make sure you get every episode in your inbox on a Wednesday as it's released, remember to click subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. Tune in again next week for the latest episode.